Hello again, and uh, welcome back to my photography discussion, digital photography. And uh, I'm an, mostly an Olympus shooter, and I shoot mostly Micro Four Thirds cameras now. I have um, six or seven cameras that are Micro Four Thirds. I have a couple of um, old Four Thirds. So I want to talk about the Four Thirds system. And Olympus started it along with Panasonic, but um, mostly Olympus, I guess. Panasonic, eh, I would add. At the main, they were sort of important too, because it was an open system that um, had some correlation. But these were the only guys who made the cameras for that uh, at the time for Four Thirds system, which is a um, DS DSLR system. So, but uh, like I said, I started with uh, Olympus Camellia C three thousand. That was a three megapixel camera, looking like that. It's actually pretty good. The image three for three megapixels was really nice, and the uh, lens was pretty good. It was f two a to f five six or something three times three times zoom, and uh, was uh, about twenty eight mil um, to what's three times twenty eight um, eighty four. So that was sort of like a wide angle to the portrait. Um, yeah, it took it took batteries like that or these special batteries. The, the double A's were the special ones. Anyhow, it used uh, Smart Media by Olympus, this kind of memory card. It was really thin. It was kind of large at the time. And then they moved on to another format, and then finally they gave up and joined the SD. So that was a uh, old time. But uh, later on, they went into Four Thirds system, right? Um, you could read about it. You can... Where did it go? Oh, there it is. Four Thirds. So you use the aspect, aspect ratio of Four Thirds standards. And eventually, basically, this is the sensor size, the red side. And if you compare it to Sigma's Fovion sensor and Canon's APS-C and then the other guy's APS-C, it's not that much smaller. Yeah, it is smaller, but, you know, they're actually comparable. So, you know, people make fun of small sensor size, but, you know, crop sensors are pretty much um, on par, you know, fractionally better or worse. It's a very slight difference. The problem they had is that nobody really made a sensor for them uh, that was good. Panasonic being a good, well, big electronic company, they, they were trying to make sensors, but they, they had some new technologies they wanted, wanted to do, but never came to make something that's, you know, much better, vastly better than the competition. So they were sort of stuck with that, not because of the sensor size, but just simply because that, you know, they were at the mercy of Sony, pretty much. And Sony owned Olympus um, share. I don't know how much of the share they owned, maybe around 50% um, for a little while. And uh, we thought that, hey, maybe they can get them like latest and greatest sensors. Actually, it happened to the 16 megapixel, which is a previous one, and the 20 megapixel. But since then, they've sort of dropped the ball in on introducing new sensors. And that was, I don't know, four or five years ago already. So that was the problem, not because they had small size sensor, but just because that nobody was um, actively updating their technology. So the competition was not great. You know, people try to sort of make fun of it, but they're good enough for what we do. And they are terrific at uh, sort of video and things like that. And I think Panasonic does a lot with that. But anyway, back to the Olympus. Um, I'm sort of a fanboy because of their color science and uh, because back then in the C3000, they had great colors, just JPEG. And they had really nice views. And later on, like I showed in the first episode, the E500, they had a lot of uh, great pictures. Anyway, here's a bunch of, okay, a bunch of cameras. Actually, Leica, yeah, Leica actually made a camera. That's just a rebadged uh, Panasonic camera. But, you know, if you wanted a Leica camera, I think, and that's cheap. I think it is a good way to go. Yeah, 75, 7.5 megapixels, um, live view, and MOS, da, 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 da. And that's slightly different from Olympus. And then, although the form was pretty much the same with the E300 and 330, sort of like a rangefinder. And yeah, that's the thing. Panasonic L1, that was what it was based on. Panasonic. Uh, but Olympus was mostly driven the camera development, as you can see. They had a single digit pro, pro line, the double digit, uh, semi pro line, which I have the E30. There you go. It was pretty good. Um, I still have it. I still, well, I don't use it that much. I actually use uh, the 500, E500 a little bit more. 
that was my first DS DSLR. It has a little mirror in there and all that. But with this system, they um, well, there's rumors of that Olympus is going to close down soon. But um, I think that's going to be a loss for the industry if they do. Um, first of all, I don't believe they will close the imaging department or um, section because they don't actually depend on it to make money. They depend on it to do research. That's why Olympus had the most innovations of all camera com companies. And, and now people are thinking, oh, Sony is um, whatever, whoever your brand is. But um, from a sort of um, outside perspective, Olympus brought it. Uh, well, let me listen now. The significant ones that are still widely used today, okay? First and most important is in body image st stabilization, IBIS. It started with E510, right? That's the camera. It's after E500. Oh my God. It's still, you know, used by all manufacturers now. They had it, they had a monopoly on it um, for, I don't know how long it was for, 10 years or so. And then eventually other people can start using it. And then that's why they're also sort of considered a leader in that department. They also have the telecentric lens design for the Because they had a smaller sensor, what they did, what they chose to do is they designed a bunch of lenses, actually shoots out the light from the rear pretty well, pretty, pretty par parallel to that sensor. I'm sorry, perpendicular to the sensor instead of scattering it. I will talk about that later on a little bit more, but uh, eventually um, new digital lenses are all considered more telecentric than before because digital sensors are um, more, they're not since, well, they're less sensitive toward the uh, angled lights that came out of the traditional old uh, lenses. But I'll talk about that later on. Anyway, telecentric lens design is one thing. Supersonic dust reduction. So basically, if you turn it on, it gives it a uh, sensor shake to, to keep the sensor clean. I think several several manufacturers do that now. So does it work? Yeah, it works okay. Um, just, you know, the, some people may find that, oh, the dust is still in there. Yeah, but at least it's you know off the, uh, it doesn't affect your image um, until next time, right? But then every time you turn it on, we shut it off now, it gives a shake. Also, they were the first ones using live view, and then they, they were the ones to go into mirrorless. The first live view, I think, is a E30. What you can do is get, it had a fully articulating LCD on a DS, DSLR. That was a E30. Let me take that out. E30. It doesn't have a lot on it information. But they were quite, in, you know, they gave, brought a lot of innovations to digital imaging. Later on, they went on to micro four thirds and they had more like, pro capture, like, you know, um, life development and all that. So they are, they keep innovating. That's the thing. So if Olympus goes, I think the competition is going to, well, there's going to be less innovation for camera technology. So uh, it's going to be a sad day, but I don't think they're going to, they're just going to toss it and say, ah, let's forget about it because um, their medical imaging um, um, technology is really making a lot of money for them. So I guess um, they should be okay. They don't depend on the cameras to make the money. So, but anyway, it'd be nice if everybody knew um, all these backgrounds about Olympus. Um, by the way, they also have great colors, great colors. And people say, oh, Fuji had great colors and all that. And uh, Canon has great colors. Olympus has uh, the reputation of having great colors. And I think these old time, you know, camera makers, they try to pull their magic on their, you know, color signs. So you got Fujifilm, you got Canon, you got uh, Pantex and Olympus. And these guys are generally better than the more electronic sourced, like um, Sony and Panasonic and Sam Samsung. Although they're trying to catch up, but, uh, you know, there's still personal preferences. A lot of people, photographers, tend to gravitate toward those. Anyway, that's today's topic. I think a little bit um, on Olympus and their contribution to digital photography. And um, see you next time. Remember to subscribe. Thank you.